Alrighty, let's fix up my hair. You guys like the new merch? Welcome everybody to the Future Space Collective where we explore the world of products for imagination. What does that mean? Art, decor, lighting, and how they all fuse together to bring your space into the future through the power of technology, smart technology, future technology, alien technologies, all sorts of technologies. So today, we're looking at a brand new product from Bliss Lights called the Bliss Lights Arc. Now, this is a second coming, if you will, to the ever popular Bliss Lights Skylight, which is their star projector that is a very popular star projector. We have done a video comparing the top three best, most popular star projectors on the market. You can check out that video in the description and there should be a link to it in the video above. But Bliss Lights has released a new product that looks rather interesting to me. I love lasers, as we all know, and this is another laser style projector. So let's jump right in and see what it's all about, shall we? Boom! And this is what we're looking at. This is the new Bliss Lights Arc. This is the box design of it. What do we what do we think here? What do we think? Tranquil ambience. Ambiente tranquilo. Ambiance tranquil. Okay. Shine peaceful abstract light patterns. Customize the brightness and motion. Adjust the projection angles. You know, very similar to the star projector. I, I when I saw this thing, I'm like, okay, I need to have it. I need to see what it's all about. So let's let's get into this box, shall we? Ow. <laughs> Smack myself in the nose with the box there for all you lovely people out there. <laughs> Anyways, getting my trusty knife. You know, I should really just grab the knife before I start the video, but you know, I didn't. And let's get into this box here. Boom. That's what we're looking at with the box, the power adapter, and we have the main unit right here. You know, they made it look much bigger in the photos. Let's take it out of the bag here. Shouldn't have put the knife away just yet, I guess, because there's tape on it. Okay, there we go. Let's hope we didn't break it. <laughs> Box, user's guide, power cable, included USB brick. They don't always give you these, you know. And of course, the main unit right here. You know, there's not much to it, it seems. You can adjust the angle with the base here, like, like so, I guess, to see you know, where you wanna shoot the laser projection. As you can see, we got some buttons, what looks to be a power button, the rotation button, and the brightness button on the side of the unit here. This is the dark gray model. They also had it in a light gray color choice for the body color as well. I mean, there's not much more to the, the thing than that. Let's, let's plug it in and see what happens. So I, you can actually feed the cable, I guess, through here if you wanted to. Maybe that's a smarter way to do it, like so. Okay, it is it is shooting, it is powering on, as you can see. Woo, woo. Um, do we have to peel anything off the lid? Let, let me shut it off before I blind myself. I'm just gonna unplug it. Okay, so, so I mean, pretty much, this is all there is to it. We can't take it much further without sort of, you know, uh, shutting off all the lights, which I have now fully automated in the studio. Computer, turn off key light. Okay, computer, turn off backlight. Ooh, all right. So now we should be able to turn this thing on and at least project it at the table. Okay, I have a good feeling about this. I think I'm gonna like this as someone who is, seems to be infatuated by laser lights here. Let's see what, okay, that's brightness level. Oh, this is rotation speed, I guess. Now we're cycling through the different modes of it. Okay, well this is just a quick look at it. So a cool trick, if you haven't seen my other videos already, is that we're gonna, we're gonna grab some, some, some fog in a can, and we're gonna spray some fog in a can, and we're gonna see what that looks like. All right, so you know what? These aren't exactly laser dots. You can somewhat see the lasers. I'm trying to find the right angle to see it on the... Uh... There, you can kind of see the lasers coming through, the smoke, the fog here. But you know what? We can't so much dive into this unit. Ow, I just sat on the cap of the fog. <laughs> We're gonna take a deep dive into the Bliss Lights arc here and a little special treat for you guys. We're gonna compare it against 
the predecessor, the Blisslight Skylight, which also now comes in a nice dark gray finish to the body. So let's quickly unpackage this, this new kind of finish. Oh, it also comes in a cobalt blue laser. I think the blue stars look a little nicer, personally, as opposed to the green stars. Okay, so let's quickly unbox the Blisslight Skylight. The original, the predecessor to the Bliss Lights arc here. So the plan is to deep dive into this, but also compare it against the Bliss Lights Skylight. Okay, so we're basically gonna check out both of these units together, see how they compare against each other, see which one you prefer, see how they differ. So this is what they look like on a side by side. You'll see the buttons on the Bliss Light arc are located right here whereas the buttons on the Bliss Light Skylight are these big buttons located right here. Like I said, the Bliss Light Skylight was released originally and I have reviewed it already. It is one of the most popular star projectors you can buy on the market. So I'm very curious to see what Bliss Lights has done with their new arc right here. All right, so let's jump right in. So I've set up the Bliss Lights arc projected roughly eight feet away onto my ceiling. This is the wide shot. You can get a feel for the first time of what it kind of looks like within the context of a space. I think it has a very unique feel and look to it. Let's flip now to the same shot with the Bliss Light Skylight for comparison. Okay, so we're tilting up now on the Bliss Light Skylight. If you're not already familiar with the Bliss Light Skylight, so the laser within this unit splits itself into a ton of different smaller beams. And this is to try to recreate the feeling of the night's stars, the night sky, if you will. And this is of course paired with the nebula graphic moving animation that is very similar in the Bliss Lights arc. So we flip back to the Bliss Lights arc here on a little bit of a different angle. And as opposed to the Bliss Lights skylight, the laser in the Bliss Lights arc is creating more of an abstract pattern on the roof. Now let's flip back to the Bliss Lights skylight in the same shot and the differences start to become more apparent between the two designs and how they look. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the side-by-side, -side, and this is even a better way to compare the two units to see what kind of designs they put out and to see what would be more suitable for you. So looking at the side-by-side -side here, it's immediately telling that the Bliss Light Skylight definitely covers a larger surface area as opposed to the design with the Bliss Lights arc, which really has this sort of 3D holographic feel to it. It almost looks like it's jumping out of the ceiling. Uh, I don't know how to explain it other than it looking sort of like holographic, but it's a very unique look as you can tell. Definitely different than the Bliss Light Skylight, which tries to mimic uh, more of the night stars, but it has more of a, a flatter look as opposed to the Bliss Lights arc, even though it does, as you can see, cover a larger surface area. They both put out a similar amount of light. I think the Bliss Light Skylight does have a bit more on the brightness power output, but they are pretty similar. And I should mention that you can purchase the Bliss Light Skylight with green laser dots instead of the blue laser dots, more similar to the Bliss Lights Arc, which has a green laser to kind of juxtapose the laser pattern with the blue nebula. I noticed that every time I turn on the Bliss Lights Arc, the abstract pattern seems to be different. It's never the same at the same moment, so that's a really neat feature in and of itself but I kind of wanted to dig deeper and figure out what exactly is going on. So what I did was I set up a time lapse and I let the thing roll for 15 minutes to kind of figure out what exactly is going on with the abstract pattern. So here's what it looks like at regular playback, regular speed. This is what it's gonna look like if you project it onto your roof. But here's what it looks like if you play it back at 10 times real time or 1000% playback speed, that's 10 times the speed of real time and it starts to become apparent how the abstract pattern moves and shifts and it's really neat. I think it's super cool and it definitely is interesting to look at this when it's played back at a faster playback speed. 
you can somewhat see the intricacies of the pattern more and how it's kind of working and that it is actually quite interesting and it does really have this sort of 3D um, holographic feel as if it's suspended in midair. The lasers are sort of rotating or spinning around this center sort of static laser image that just really helps to sell the effect. And I think they've done a good job at integrating it and how it looks. My only complaint with the Bliss Lights arc is I wish it looked closer to this in real time. I wish the rotation was a bit faster um, as it is fairly slow when we look at it at real time, how it actually is projected. Okay, so moving forward into what the different modes are through the button presses. The first button cycles through the effects. So if you press it once, it will power on the unit. If you press it again, it'll go into this sort of like pulse mode where it kind of fades in and out. If you press it again, it'll go to display the laser only. If you press it once more, it'll display the nebula cloud only. And if you press it again, it will power down the unit. The second button turns the rotation on or off. So if you want it to move or if you want a static image. And of course, the third button controls the brightness of the overall unit, uh, high, medium or low, three different options. As for the Bliss Light Skylight, it has all the exact same modes. So power on and then the second button press will give us this sort of pulse mode as we just saw. If we click it again, it'll show us just the laser stars only. If we click the mode button once more, it'll show us the nebula cloud only. And then if we click it once again, it will power down the unit. Middle button turns rotation on or off. You can turn the rotation on or off on any one of those modes we just went through. And then lastly, we have the brightness, full power, medium or low. Alrighty, so that just about wraps us up for today's video comparing the Bliss Lights Arc against its predecessor, the Bliss Lights Skylight. I'm super curious what you think looks better, what you think is more favorable of a pattern, what you think would suit your own space better. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think and what you prefer. If you're gonna purchase one of these units, I urge you to please click our links in the description and use those to purchase as they are affiliate links and they do help to support the channel. With that said, this is the Future Space Collective where we explore the world of products for imagination, art, decor, lighting, and how to take your space into the future.